Right now at noon, the man who falsely claimed to be an Illinois boy missing for eight years has been charged. We'll have the latest. And President Trump heads to the southern border. We'll hear his warning to Mexico. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now on this Friday afternoon. We just about made it. We'll get to those stories in a bit. First, let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Chris Reese has a look at your first alert forecast. A dreary start to the day, but things are looking up. Yes, that's right. We are starting to see a little bit more sunshine working its feet. And that is what we certainly do like to see. We had a little bit of unsettled weather across parts of the state earlier on today that did lead to some shower activity in the north and eastern parts of the area. A lot of us saw a blanket of fog as well, but all of that starting to lift out of the area now, seeing some blue skies filter in. A lot of us do still have a lot of cloud cover out there, but as you look at visible cloud track, you can actually see where the drier air is starting to filter in and a lot of that cloud cover starting to fade away, allowing more sunshine to reach the ground. I do think we will see some additional clearing as we go into the afternoon, and that's where temperatures do have the chance to warm up a little bit more as well. Right now, we're at 45 here in Madison, and a lot of those temperatures underneath that cloud cover are in the upper 30s and lower 40s. But where there is sunshine, notice how temperatures are closer towards that 50 degree mark, especially across southern and western Wisconsin. That's the trend that I do believe we will see as we go through the afternoon. Expect those highs to top out right around 55, but we will keep at least a little bit of cloud cover around overnight, Mark. And we're looking for a warm weekend. Yeah, this weekend, not too shabby, especially when it comes to those temperatures. All right, Chris, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. My pleasure. Top of the news today, the FBI says an Ohio man has been charged with making false statements after authorities say he claimed to be an Illinois boy missing for eight years. An affidavit filed in federal court says 23-year-old Brian Rennie repeatedly told investigators he was Timothy Pitson, who disappeared in Aurora, Illinois in 2011 at the age of six. An affidavit says Rennie refused to be fingerprinted but submitted to a DNA test after which his true identity was determined. Rini had actually uh, on two prior occasions uh, claimed to be a victim of juvenile sex trafficking and that on those occasions he had been discovered, his true identity had been discovered when he had been fingerprinted. Investigators say Rennie could face up to eight years in federal prison if convicted. An autopsy scheduled today for a woman who was found dead in a Wisconsin Dells home. Dells officers went to a home yesterday afternoon to do a welfare check. A 23-year-old woman was found dead at the residence and a 31-year-old man was arrested when he returned to the home. Police have not identified the woman or say how she died. There is no threat to the public and the incident is considered domestic in nature. A Janesville home considered a total loss after a fire last night. The fire broke out on Hankey Road around 9 o'clock last night. When the Janesville Fire Department arrived at the scene, firefighters found heavy fire conditions on the first and second and floor, second, first floor, second floor, and attic. All family members were able to get out of the home, but a dog was found dead. Damage to the home is estimated at $168,000. The cause of that fire still under investigation. In East Madison, restaurants sustained significant damage in a fire early this morning. It happened at the Sumo Steakhouse and Sushi Bar on Parkside Drive. Madison Fire Department says it's unknown how long the fire had been burning before a passerby called 911 at 2.30 to report smoke in the area. Firefighters say the fire was kept in check overnight by an automatic fire sprinkler. Fire officials say the kitchen suffered significant damage. The man convicted along with his uncle in a Wisconsin slaying that was featured in the Netflix series Making a Murderer has been moved to a less secure prison. State Department of Correction records show that Brendan Dassey was moved this week from the Maximum Security Columbia Correctional Institution in Portage to the Oshkosh Correctional Institution. That is a medium security prison. Dassey is serving a life sentence for helping his uncle Stephen Avery sexually assault and kill Teresa Hallback back in 2005. Dassey's attorney says he earned the transfer because of good behavior and will have more freedom and job opportunities. 
The search for a California woman kidnapped on an African safari earlier this week has intensified. Security teams in Uganda have expanded their search beyond the wildlife park where Kimberly Sue Endicott and a local driver were taken at gunpoint Tuesday night. The gunman used Endicott's cell phone to demand a half million dollar ransom. Authorities tell CBS News hard negotiations are taking place and the 56-year-old has been on the phone at least once a day to prove she's alive. America's official policy is not to pay hostage takers. A California engineer accused of trying to kill a co-worker by slowly poisoning her over more than a year is in custody this morning. Prosecutors say 34-year-old David Shu added toxic metal to the woman's food and water until she finally caught him on camera. The toxic metal can cause kidney failure and other serious health problems. President Trump is heading to California today for a visit to the southern U.S. border. The president has backed off a threat to close the border, but says Mexico has been placed on notice. CBS's Mola Lange reports from the White House. President Trump departed the White House Friday morning bound for California. The itinerary includes a stop in the town of Calexico, where an existing wall has been remodeled. I'm heading to the border. We're building a lot of wall. We're going to show you a section, and a lot of things are happening. The visit comes amid a surge of asylum seekers entering the country. The president threatened to close the border completely, but decided against it. Mr. Trump says that's because Mexico heeded his warnings. I never changed my mind at all. Uh, I may shut it down at some point, but I'd rather do tariffs. So Mexico, I have to say, has been very, very good. You know that over the last four days since I talked about shutting down the border. The president says Mexican authorities have started to stop U.S.-bound migrant caravans. They apprehend people at their southern border where they don't have to walk through. Uh, that's a big home run. Now, Congress has to act. They have to get rid of catch and release, chain migration, visa lottery. They have to get rid of the whole asylum system. The president's threat to close the border raised concerns from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle about the economic impact. We shouldn't be punishing law-abiding American businesses. It would cause as much damage to the U.S. economy as it would to uh, the Mexican uh, economy. Tonight, the president attends a fundraiser in Los Angeles and then overnights in Las Vegas. Mola Lenghi, CBS News, the White House. When departing this morning, the president said he will not be attending the White House Correspondents' Dinner and will hold a rally instead. Drivers should expect delays and detours around downtown Middleton over the coming months. Starting April 22nd, stretches of University Avenue between Cayuga, Cayuga and Park Street will be closed in both directions. It's part of a $2 million reconstruction project that includes new pavement, traffic signals, and left turn lanes at the intersection with Parmenter. The project expected to be wrapped up by the 4th of July. And there's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. I'm next. Let's see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. What happens if we combine these with this? The result will probably surprise you in a very pleasant way. So grab a fork, because you're not going to want to miss this. Mm -mm.
You know, one of the things we love to do here in the test kitchen is to combine the best part of two recipes. To help you get a better appreciation of what I'm talking about, today we're combining everything we love about homemade potato stuffed pierogies with a classic Italian favorite, lasagna. Here's how. We start by cooking some lasagna noodles according to the package directions and draining them really well. Then, in some butter, we saute some onions that we seasoned with a bit of salt until they're golden. Now, we add most of the cooked onions to some mashed potatoes along with some shredded cheddar cheese and a bit of black pepper. To build this, we layer our mashed potato filling with the noodles just as if we were building a traditional lasagna. After all the noodles and potatoes are gone, we top it with the rest of our golden onions. Once this is baked, it's ready to cut into squares and enjoy. And yes, it tastes just like an old world pierogi, but is so much easier to make. I hope you'll go online to get the recipe for what we call pierogi lasagna. It's packed with all sorts of cheesy goodness. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a Two in one way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. There's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. Up next, a cloudy and mild end of the work week. Meteorologist Chris Reese says some clearings on the way. He'll have your weekend forecast when we come back. Our call for action phone bank is open right now, ready to take on your consumer issues. The number to call, 608-270-2833. Prime Minister Theresa May tries to press, press pause again on Brexit. And if a Costco-sized pack of toilet paper wasn't enough, Charmin says it's got you covered. Diane King Hall has more in today's Money Watch report.
British Prime Minister Theresa May is asking for another Brexit delay. May asked the EU to delay Britain's departure from the European Union to June 30th. Meanwhile, the president of the European Council has reportedly proposed a 12-month extension to allow the UK the flexibility to exit the EU whenever British lawmakers finally agree on a deal. The U.S. job market rebounded in March. According to the Labor Department, employers added 196,000 jobs last month. That was better than expected and a sharp improvement over February when the economy only grew by 33,000 jobs. Jobs in health care and professional and technical services led the gains, while the retail and manufacturing sector cut jobs. Overall, wages improved for the month. And the nation's unemployment rate remained unchanged at 3.8 percent. And if you don't like changing the toilet paper roll at home, Charmin is out with the forever roll. Now, the roll doesn't last forever, but Charmin says it can last as long as a month. The forever roll comes with a free stand if you buy three rolls. And you'll need it because regular TP holders aren't strong enough. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King Hall. Diane, thank you. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials up 30 points, the NASDAQ up 43, but and the SP 500 is up almost 11 points. Q106 Farm Director Pam Yaki out of the radio barn today, so here are your farm numbers. Let's get a check of the weekend weather now. Chris Reese is standing by with your first alert forecast. Hi, Chris. Hello, Mark. We're finally starting to see a little bit more sunshine entering the picture. It's really been a gray start to the day, but finally some drier air is working in. This is a live look over the hazy lakeshore right now. That's because there's still a little bit of fog impacting our weather, but things will get better in time. This is visible cloud track just showing you the cloud cover and notice how we start to see this stripe of sunshine moving into the picture. Some drier air starts to allow some of that cloud cover to fade away. Where there's less cloud cover, temperatures are warmer. We've jumped up to 47 here in town, 52 in Mineral Point, same for our friends in Monroe right now. And I do think all of us will eventually make it into the 50s. We still have those winds coming out of the south at six miles per hour. That southerly wind is really going to help things stay a little bit warmer. 55 for your highs as we move into the afternoon. More cloud cover, though, will arrive overnight tonight. We're going to keep those lows into the low and mid 40s, but then watch what happens into Saturday. Saturday, I do think there's going to be a chance for rain and perhaps some thunderstorms, mainly north of Madison, but we're going to stay unsettled with that mix of sun and clouds throughout your day on Saturday. As we head into Sunday, we'll see more cloud cover and more chances for rain as well. Each day, we'll see those highs working their way into the mid and perhaps even upper 60s for some of us. But here's what we have going on right now. Really, our overall pattern is just unsettled. Several regions of low pressure throughout the Midwest and back through the high plains. It's keeping the shower chances and the storm chances around as well. And that's why there's been no just full day of sunshine. It seems like every single day we've got another system coming our way. This is why we've got a lot going on in our atmosphere. Strong jet stream as well. And you're actually going to notice our pattern pick up in activity as we go through time. A very strong jet stream across the Pacific is going to steer multiple regions of low pressure into our neck of the woods here. And also watch these two swirls. Those are two individual storm systems that are actually going to get caught up in this strong jet stream. And essentially that's going to come 
come into the California coast, take a dive towards the south and then curl up towards the Great Lakes. We'll see a lot of this as we go through the next couple of weeks, and this is going to lead to more severe weather chances across the deep south. In fact, already there's a severe weather chance this weekend for parts of Texas throughout Illinois, all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Watch how the storm system comes in and develops the showers and thunderstorms Saturday and into Sunday. Here come our rain chances as well as we are on the northern side of that. Then that works its way on towards the east as the next system begins to work its way on in. I'll admit we're likely going to be on the colder side of that, so that could be a cold rain or a wet snow towards the south. Severe weather is going to be possible, and here's the deal. As we go through time, the severe weather threat does begin to move north. April is when we start to see that, and we'll see the peak of tornado reports and severe weather activity as we get into June and July. Those days are not far away, folks. So now is the time to begin to practice, especially with next week being severe weather awareness week. So we're going to have tornado drills as we go into the week ahead. And of course, we'll be letting you guys know what you can expect when it comes to severe weather, along with how to prepare for it. But this comes at good timing just because the next six to 10 days, we are really going to see an uptick in that activity across the middle of the country. And eventually that does work its way into our part of the country as well. So warmth this weekend, folks, keep that in mind. Enjoy that warmth this weekend because we are getting cold by the middle of next week uh, with some rain and snow chances as well. Ooh, 29. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It's a, it's a nice reminder that it is April, of course, but it doesn't look like last April. All right, we'll enjoy this weekend, that's <laughs> yeah. for sure. All right, ahead on News 3 now at noon, two incredibly stubborn people in L.A. were fighting for a parking spot at the same time, that story after a short break. Well, parking in Los Angeles can be a nightmare, but it can be particularly rough in the congested neighborhood of Koreatown. That's where two drivers recently stood their ground for a prime parking spot. 
For more than an hour, Greg Mills has the story. Can't find parking any time of the day or night. He said he sees double parking, parking in red zones all the time. He and everyone else told us demand far exceeds supply here in Koreatown. I mean, I got rid of my car for the sole reason of it. Thanks to pics and videos from Mariah Flores' window here at 5th and Catalina, the world was able to witness via Twitter parallel parking and patience taken to absurd levels. Yeah, just kind of a silly situation. The driver of that silver car boxing in the driver of the black car. Flores noticed neither was budging around 6.20 p.m. and started posting tweets soon after. 6.40 is still here, but now they have turned on their flashers. Oh, they stayed just like this for more than an hour. These two drivers were patient, but others weren't. Vin Scully would have been proud of her play-by-play -play account, which was going viral. She asked people to choose Team Silver Car or Team Black Car. Chrissy Teigen was a black team car. Team Black Car, of course. Car. Yeah, anybody who's a good driver is Team Black Car. It was turning dark and neither car had budged. Approaching our one hour mark and then we did make the one hour mark. There's the celebration. Yeah. That's when Andrew McCray came out to move his car, creating space for both cars to park. I was glad that I could uh, resolve that issue, I guess. Finally, about an hour and 40 minutes after this face-off started, Flores posted, Silver takes the gold, as that driver opens the door and climbs out. Unbelievable, Chris. <laughs> Final <laughs> check of the forecast. Yeah, that right there is actually rather funny. But hey, we're seeing more sunshine as we go into the afternoon, which is good news. I do expect those highs to top out right around 55 degrees overnight tonight. Partly cloudy. Expect lows around 43. All right, that's our time for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.